We are back with an Earth Day cover story. A look at how rock dust is being used to fertilize the ground and clean the air. Ginger's in North Carolina for the Our Home campaign, spotlighting efforts to protect, restore, and celebrate our planet. Good morning, Ginger. Hey, good morning to you, George. You know it wouldn't be Earth Day if we weren't talking about getting carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. We talk about planting trees or maybe having seaweed farms. Even remember in Iceland when I showed those vacuums that were sucking it out of the air? Well, farmer Rick Bennett and I are doing something a whole lot simpler. From our drone, you can likely see that plume of gray. That is rock dust, basalt dust. And we are spreading it over this field here in Butner, North Carolina. I know it seems like that doesn't make a ton of sense. We're going to explain it, but it really turns out a part of the climate solution has always been right under our feet. Rocks already have the ability to capture carbon. Mm -hmm. They do about 1 billion tons of natural carbon capture every year. In nature, rocks like limestone and basalt help pull carbon out of the atmosphere and help counter global warming. Now, a company called Lithos Carbon is speeding up that process with something called enhanced rock weathering. Our job is to supercharge what nature could do over time. Because this rock, if put out on a field, it's going to take thousands of years to do anything. It's like putting cubes or rocks of sugar in your coffee, which is probably not going to do much versus powdered sugar in your coffee. That powdered sugar in this case is basalt rock dust. We're taking this material and spreading out at like one millimeter depth mm -hmm. across millions of acres of farmland eventually. Mm -hmm. And that really accelerates the weathering. At Lithos, they are on a mission to remove more than a billion tons of CO2 in the next decade. They plan to do it by using the waste product from this mine. The Sunrock Mine, just outside Durham, North Carolina, didn't realize their waste product, rock dust, is climate gold. For the last 10 plus years, we've piled it up. I like this. We're summiting like waste mountain. Exactly. <laughs> A 120-foot mountain of basalt dust that Lithos is now carting off by the literal truckload to nearby farms. Wow. Grab a handful and you can see how fine it is. Like, you can break that up, feel in your fingers. You want the good news or the great news first? The good news? Rock dust is also an excellent fertilizer. The great news is that the added benefit to it raising the pH of the soil and increasing crop yields is that it also benefits every person on the planet, that it's cleaning the air <laughs> at the same time. Is enhanced rock weathering scalable? It's not rocket science, it's rock science. We can do carbon removal at the speeds that society needs it at. What is that speed? We need it ASAP, we needed it yesterday. So um, the IPCC says that we need five to six billion tons mm -hmm. of carbon dioxide removed from the atmosphere every year to make the whole atmospheric budget balance. Right? Can enhanced rock weathering do all of that? Absolutely. It's a very simple sort of solution. Mm -hmm. We're just taking things humans already do, rocks, farms, science, and then bringing it all together. And hopefully something that more of the globe can run with as well. Now in the three minutes that we have been spreading this rock dust, which you can clearly see from that plume from our drone, that three minutes we have eliminated uh, so many tons of carbon that it would actually be equivalent to five homes in America over an entire year. So just 20 tons of rock dust does that much good. And this is just one of more than 600 farms in 11 states that Lithos is working with alone. They are one of many enhanced rock weathering companies that XPRIZE is looking at to award tomorrow, by the way, in carbon removal. And I know we sent back some of the dust, so you all have some in your hands. You can actually yeah. put that on your gardens, on your grass, and make a small impact, too. And it will actually help your plants. Ooh. I'm going to do it. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. incredible, sir. So how do we know it's working? So they are meticulous about their data. Rick has shown me, we are spreading as we go here, the, the screens and the, the high tech that happens within the cab of this tractor is pretty amazing. That? that data is sent back to Lithos as we speak, and then they take different samples, thousands of them from all these farms all over, and they can see how much carbon has been sequestered, but also the farmer gets really great information on how their soil and their plants are doing, and the yields are improving. This is a win-win-win across the board. By the way, as if we 
didn't need more, it deacidifies oceans as it goes to. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. And please give that farmer a hug for us. What yeah. they do. He has the sweetest face. Yeah, he really does. It's been really oh, nice. Thank you. GZ, how do they scale this? I know we gotta go, but how do they scale last time we were here? Amazing. How do they scale this up so everybody can be using it? Yes, and that's the important part. And the scaling, think about this, we already have everything. A lot of times you see these carbon dioxide removal processes, these technologies come out, it's like, oh gosh, we have to build these huge things. No, Rick and the farmers are already doing this with lime usually. So putting basalt in here doesn't change anything. Wow. The supply chain doesn't change. We just really need that front end, um, you know, the money coming in on the front end, which so far it has. Okay.